drama review today I'm continuing my look into the wonderful universe of Jago and Lightfoot as I take a look at the first full series released by Big Finish back in June 2010 starring Christopher Benjamin as Henry Gordon Jago and Trevor Baxter as Professor George Lightfoot. I'm incredibly excited to in fact start this review because this is sort of the first era of Jago and Lightfoot that we have because previously in this review series I have reviewed the Talents of Wang Chiang and the Mahogany Murders both of which being a Doctor Who story and a Doctor Who companion chronicle they are all under the Doctor Who label. This is the first experience of Jay Gun Lightfoot as its own independent sort of spin-off. This is the equivalent, as I say, of Series 1. It has its own style and it sort of has its own little pedestal of what it wants to do because the Doctor is no longer around, the main protagonists are Jay Gun Lightfoot, they are no longer extras within a classic story, they have sort of the free reins to do what they want and I think that, that is the main difference between what we've had so far in the Jay Gun Lightfoot era and this series, meaning this is probably the best impression so far that we've actually got of Jay Gun Lightfoot together, the chemistry Street that they have and this series is an absolute wonderful place to start as you can imagine with it being series one it is the best jumping on point possible because you can start the adventure from essentially the very beginning if you've seen the talents of Wang Chiang of course and basically the main aim of these reviews there is there's no denying sort of here but the main aim of them is to basically brainwash all of you into being Jay Gun Lightfoot fans because the unusual thing with Big Finish is it is sort of money driven there's no denying that it's a series that is based around right we've got the these box sets. If they sell, we will make more. If Jay Gun Lightfoot didn't have those sales in the beginning years, if Series 1 wasn't very good, if Series 2 wasn't very good, they probably would have gone, yeah, let's just drop it after, say, Series 5, and that's it. But that did not happen. We have 13 series, along with additional specials, along with them coming into Doctor Who, along with them being the Sixth Doctor, Last Adventures box set as well, because, and the main reason for that is, they are absolutely superb. They have their own style and they literally have their own era of Doctor Who completely to themselves. I think that this is the most unique Doctor Who spin-off going. I think that this is sort of on the same boundary as Graceless. It's kind of in this own little bubble where people know it's superb. Big Finish fans know that it's superb. It's one of the most highly praised Big Finish spin-offs going. However, there isn't really many people that actively promote it. It's kind of one of those things that you kind of just accept that it's good. Almost like Spare Parts, Chimes of Midnight, Jubilee, sort of the holy terror to an extent as well. So basically, my main aim of this series is to, to kind of introduce all of you to Jago Lightfoot and hopefully get you involved in their wonderful universe of adventure as well because as you can tell I'm very passionate about this series and I kind of want to share it all with you sort of like a good book because it is a lovely series worth of adventures. This is all helped by the fact that on the website currently on Big Finish the physical edition is only £20 and the download is only £18 meaning that it is basically cheaper than your standard sort of four part box set like this normally those would be around £35 especially for Jago Lightfoot they don't have any pre-order price or anything like that but it is high quality drama but yeah it's one of those things is that if you want to actually get into Jago and Lightfoot, you've got the Mahogany Murders that is only like £8.99, and it's like a monologue piece, and then you've got this, which is once again only £20. It's pretty much four hours worth of adventures, four investigations, and it really gets you involved in the Jago and Lightfoot universe and gives you sort of like a whistle stop tour of what to expect. So basically, if you like what I say in this review, then definitely go onto the Big Finish website, listen to the trailer, story details as well, and possibly buy this release. And also, when this release is in fact on sale, it is of course even cheaper. I think that I seen this set at one point go for like £10, which I just felt like everybody needs to buy it for only £10. It is just a wonderful piece that I think everybody should witness or listen to or experience or whatever you prefer. Taking a look at some of the details on the Big Finish website now, we do of course have four investigations. This is the sort of outline of all the normal series of Jago Lightfoot. So the first case is The Bloodless Soldier written by Justin Richards. Episode 2 is The Below the Devil written by Alan Barnes. Episode 3 is The Spirit Trap written by Jonathan Morris. And the series finale is The Similarity Trap written by Andy Lane. Of course, a person 
have written the original Mahogany Murders um, a year previous, I do believe, from the release of this story. The series is directed by Lisa Barman, of course, Jago Lightfoot's very own Ellie Hickson, and it is also directed by John Ainsworth as well, and the cast, as I say, is Chris of Benjamin as Henry Gordon Jago, Trevor Baxter as Professor Lightfoot, Lisa Barman as Ellie Hickson, and Conrad Asquith as Sergeant Quick, along with many other members in the cast as well. So yeah, this is basically, as I say, a really nice starting off point because it gives you sort of four individual stories that give their own individual representation of sort of what Jay Gunn Lightfoot is about. So the first episode, as I say, is The Bloodless Soldier, written by Justin Richards, and this episode basically plummets Jay Gunn Lightfoot into the sci-fi universe once again, and I think that it is an absolutely wonderful way to start the series. Unlike sort of episodes such as say, Sarah Jane Adventures or Class, sort of very much a representation that has been made recently where in order to make a Doctor Who spin-off successful, you need a character that has already been within Doctor Who and has had a big role, such as John Barrowman, such as Sarah Jane, even in Class we had Peter Capaldi literally just coming in and going, these are your main people, you're meant to like these for the rest of the series, and then you kind of just need to go along with it. With this episode, with the first episode of Jago Lightfoot, you actually feel that this is just them, the Infernal Investigators, having their own case. It is a slow starter, and it's nothing special, which is what I like. I think that this is, when compared to every other Jago Lightfoot story, it isn't exactly one that is up there as one of the most superb. It's just this is what Jago Lightfoot is, this is the adventure that we're going to tell, and it just introduces the characters wonderfully. Of course, in this episode, we get Ellie Higson um, nicely introduced in a way with her brother, which is a character that we get used to throughout the series, and then we also get sort of the development of Christopher Benjamin's Jago and Lightfoot as well, really getting to grips with their character and sort of their personalities and the way that they work together. We get the introduction of the Red Tavern, of course, the pub that they always go and have a drink at pretty much every single story, and then we also get the introduction of the careers. So in this story, we have Jago actually being introduced to the theatre and sort of having his own role there and showing how his theatre is having a few struggles and it turns out that the case involved within this story actually has a bit of infliction within the theatre itself which is nice and then we also have the morgue and sort of uh, autopsies of course what Lightfoot does on a daily basis because he works in a morgue and he's sort of like a professor that does that type of thing but yeah it's nice to see that's been sort of plummeted into this story and I think that the main thing for this one is I like to call it these styles of stories these science fiction fiction growly ones because a big finish always tend to do these stories that have your stereotypical big growly gorilla monster almost like a bigfoot where in this story we have essentially a soldier that is mutated into this rather big gorilla vicious ravenous creature that the army kind of need to keep under control it's one of their leaders and they need to do sort of a series of burglaries on these butchers in order to get meat to kind of sustain this creature and then by the very end of this story Jago ends up buying the creature as a part of sort of like a theater a thing to be an entertainment piece and he sort of has this dodgy sort of end um, transaction at the back of King's Cross which then leads to sort of the final scene of this story that is in fact very tense for the first episode of the series it definitely tests the relationship and the boundaries of Jay Gunn like we have the equivalent of people being held at gunpoint and then we also have an element of this story that is brought up in the later series as well it's a very big moment and one of the things that actually sort of really sort of makes me think this story is important is at the very end Sergeant Quick goes to Lightfoot and says you can come back to the police station if you want to kind of rest and let things ease in and then he just turns around to Sergeant Quick and says no thank you I've got my friend here referring to Jago and that kind of sort of establishes this is their relationship now they've kind of bonded over this unusual thing that they've both experienced together and now they are pretty strong friends. I think that this story is incredibly obvious to show that chemistry between the two people and I think that this episode is mainly based around Jago Lightfoot. The actual monster plot, sort of with the unusual gorilla creature type thing, doesn't really get too much screen time. I think it is especially at the very end where we sort of see it sort of a little bit more developed. You don't really get too much. It is a little bit of a simple plot because with it being the first story we want to aim around the main protagonists a little bit more and we do get a little bit more development with more complex plots later on in the series. So overall a very good starting story. Of one of which that starts this universe of Jago Lightfoot incredibly nicely. Episode 2 is The Below of the Devil, written by Alan Barnes, and this is a style of story that I like to refer to as the Victorian murder mystery, because that is essentially what it is. Somebody gets murdered in unusual circumstances, in this case somebody gets murdered on the circle line, of course a part of the underground, in full sort of uniform, and they believe that they've been killed by a scimitar, but it turns out the person that has been killed 
died many many weeks previous and it is rather unusual and the whole idea of the story is how has this person died when they're meant to be dead already what's going on something unusual is happening and then uh, infernal investigations once again sort of need to sort of come to the forefront and once love the way that this story unfolds we really get to grips with and lightfoot's actual career path and expertise in the story with him of course being sort of the morgue person that he is and um, we do have um him examining dead bodies we also have another person that we have dr Sacker played by duncan wisby and he's the equivalent of another sort of person that looks at dead bodies and we have Lightfoot sort of comparing these dead bodies and then we get sort of the impression of this is what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. I, normal life has sort of been in a way infected by this sort of extraterrestrial sort of thing that has came to earth and then by the very end of the story we see a few revelations happen, a few unexpected twists as well. Jago comes in, has a few theatrical moments in there relating to his expertise and then we also get the wonderful comedic elements coming in. I think that the first story story is very much rather sort of a little bit more toned down. This one is where we really get to grips with the characters. It is a little bit more relaxed. We get a few funny moments in there such as when Jago and Lightfoot go off to the Red Tavern and they get a little bit drunk and then they end up basically hiring somebody called Resurrection Joe that is the equivalent of somebody that is a body snatcher in a Victorian cemetery and they end up doing a few dodgy transactions there. Um, and it is unusual because you have this rather sort of well-spoken gentleman doing this rather unexpected thing and the wonderful thing of how having sort of Professor Lightfoot being from this rather well-off background. He was brought up in China. He has quite a lot of money, I think it's fair to say. And then you have um, Jago in there as well. He's probably less well-off. He's a little bit of a failing businessman, sort of on his last tether as well. A few things have gone wrong in his life. And you kind of have them both coming together and then giving those two different impressions of this is the theatre life and this is somebody sort of just getting by, kind of, but still a little bit above everybody else who sort of thinks he's absolutely amazing with theatrical empire of course that Jago is and then you get Lightfoot that is very safe and sort of a very prominent part I guess of Victorian London society. We also get the introduction of the Far Off Travellers Club in this story which is the equivalent of a suicide club where people go when their life has fell apart and basically they can get a new identity and they can go to somewhere else and pretend to be somebody and it's something that probably can't happen these days with the internet and things it's just incredibly hard to actually be sort of fraud to be somebody else but this time we have um, somebody that is in fact sort of pretending to die in these unusual circumstances and then we also have people actually being killed as well there's a few references in the later half of this story when Jago gets involved that he pretty much nearly gets killed in the style of Al Capone or sort of the way that he treats people where they sort of dunk the body in concrete or something like that and then chuck them to the bottom of the Thames so naturally they'll sink so that's very nice isn't it but yeah it's sort of one of those ones that once again it says this is Jake on Lightfoot we're going to introduce suicide into only the second story so we've had gunshots and sort of murder in the first one, suicide in this one. You can already tell this is sort of getting a bit more of a darker series that is a little bit different or very different to Doctor Who. I think that this episode for me is probably the one that gave me the most laughs. I think it is really nicely written and I do think that Alan Barnes actually came back quite a lot in the next series as well to actually do a few more comedic stories. He can definitely, in fact, all the writers throughout this series really nicely and consistently get that chemistry between Lightfoot and Jago. I think that they write them all absolutely brilliantly along with the extra characters as well such as Sergeant Quick and Ellie I think it's really nicely creating a sort of this family that once again in later series you actually get to know very very well. Episode 3 is The Spirit Trap written by Jonathan Morris and I think that this is possibly my favourite entry for the series simply because it's an area of Doctor Who for me that really nicely sits with me. It is that relationship between Doctor Who, that science fiction and then along with that paranormal mythology and kind of the big massive question mark of what is going on, what is this mystery and this is basically all around ghosts and seances which absolutely Absolutely perfect thing to do with Victorian London. Doctor Who's done it in the past, of course, sort of most recently, I would say in The Unquiet Dead, we had that wonderful episode of Charles Dickens where they had ghosts in there. And I think that that sheer relationship between Victorian London and ghosts is something that just goes incredibly well together. Sort of that dark, grimy sort of streets of London and that mystery that's normally always foggy as well. It's kind of the perfect, almost breeding ground for a ghost story. And this episode is very much based around seances and Jago kind of trying to crack down on if these seances are real or not because he thinks it's all a big massive fraud scheme once again and they're using sort of theatrical trickery to create these noises within the seance to make it look like they're communicating with the dead and then kind of saying questions and the person giving away who the person is sort of when sort of thinking that they're contacting the dead and then we also have Lightfoot being involved in the story as well and I like the way that in this story we get the equivalent of yes we know something's going on so what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that we just want to go and experience this for ourselves and basically put ourselves 
head first into the danger and I think this this story actually really gets to grips with that relationship between the two characters and showing how they're willing to put their necks on the line. This story brings Ellie back into the forefront as well relating to the first story after a few events that happen in that story she's struggling a little bit and she decides to go to this person called Miss Vanguard who believes to contact the dead and we have sort of a few personal elements throughout the story that relate to her. Then once again this story sort of has an overarching thread of the upcoming series as well the later half of Jago Lightfoot I do believe probably Probably Jago Left at Series 12, and um, that I did previously review. We do have a few elements in that that are kind of recaptured and um, from this story. This is the third case in the series, and we almost get that third style introduced. The first one being science fiction, the second one being murder mystery, and then this one sort of being the idea of paranormal. And then the sort of series finale, we get that sort of all blended together in a bit more Victorian London meets science fiction. So once again, it's really experimental, and it just sits so well within that Victorian London atmosphere. The thing with this story is Jonathan Morris has a really good way to actually reveal little bits of the plot, however, not too much, meaning that throughout the whole lesson of this release, you actually think, oh, is this happening? And then you kind of keep yourself guessing all the way through. You think you're getting onto something, and then that, in fact, sort of backfires, and it turns out not, and it's sort of a bit of a dead end. But you, then you go and think something else, and it really does keep you sort of engrossed about the whole story. And then at the very end, you get a little bit of a twist as well, when you think, well, hang on, there is an element of truth to this, and that is something that definitely confuses Jago throughout this one, because it is undeniable that there is sort of theatrical trickery there where they have sort of strings and things that make different things clang to make it look like that they're talking to the dead. That is all fake. However, at the same time, these ghostly seances do have the element of truth when they know that people die, they know how they died, and they know that they can sort of chat to people within the dead. And it turns out that there is this alien sort of entity from the future that is in fact harbouring this idea of ghosts and sort of harbouring people's dead bodies. And we have this moment where Jago gets to call over near the end of the story for one of the many times in Jago Night for History where Jago ends up getting took over by an entity and we have some wonderful acting from Christopher Benjamin where in fact feels sort of rather evil and then almost in this in fact in the series finale as well we get him sort of taken over again so we get some rather experimental stuff throughout this series with Jago not necessarily with Lightfoot I think that Lightfoot's definitely a more reserved character throughout this series but what I like with this one is it definitely relates to the idea and the current sort of period of history that we're in because the main idea for this one is we are going to take over the British Empire not just the world or global it's just the British Empire because that's very small it's very confined and it's kind of the most powerful thing going on at the minute and it is very much of that time that whole idea of we want to get popular and um, we want people to know about us we know these high authority people to come to our seances see how good they are and then eventually this information will get passed on to the Queen and then even she will want a seance and then that is when they take over the whole of the UK and the British Empire so yeah it's a rather fun story very much of the time and at the same time as well a rather experimental one with your standard ghostly paranormal story. Then of course the series finale is a similarity engine written by Andy Lynn who's the same person who written the Mahogany Murders, the pilot to Jago and Lightfoot, the companion Coracle and this episode basically ties together all the previous elements from the other story that were kind of the mysteries that were left over meaning that there is a bit of a plot throughout the series so the actual investigations themselves there is like an overarching theme that is then brought together at the very end a little bit of sort of a plot arc however you don't really notice it which is the main thing of Jago and Lightfoot. I think that this series is definitely less experimental than what it comes to be in the future which is a good thing you want to start off very easily for series one I think and then this story is basically around the idea of Dr. Tulp returning which Dr. Tulp is the person from the Mahogany Murders and he's pretty much your stereotypical evil villain and I love the idea of this story because he's basically travelled in time and once again we have that relationship between humanity and this random sort of squid creature that is stuck onto him whilst he's time travelling and has kind of gradually took him over to the extent where he even needs to wear sort of human glove things and then when you take them off it's all tentacles underneath and it is all a little bit gross and, ugh. and he needs people to sort of work for him in order to even work his own machinery and it is quite sad a patchwork villain where they're sort of not really all together they're kind of losing the will to live all of their plans are kind of falling apart as well because all their henchmen kind of leave them then they're left powerless and then by the very end of the story the monster actually ends up taking him over and then we sort of get the main theme of this is the big massive squid creature or this is the big massive hairy gorilla creature much like the first story once once again returning and then we also get the idea of Victorian ore as well the idea of mining and the industrial revolution that little introduction for this story once again so something that's very much relevant to that period and this unusual ore that has been found where if 
briefly sort of touch it or come into contact with it, sort of unusual boils will appear on the skin. We have police as well that have been doing sort of moonlighting, which is something that they do sort of after hours from work to kind of get extra pay because in this time, of course, people need more money because people are struggling. So we have the police kind of once again tied into this story, bringing in Sergeant Quick, which is nice. And then we have Ellie introduced at the right end of this story as well. Um, and not really too much for her in this actual series finale. I think that her kind of final for this series is very much episode three. To start the story as well, we get Jay Gull going off to a theatre to kind of do a little bit of an audition. He ends up tripping over a puddle and then ends up in a hospital that turns out to be a little bit of an unusual hospital and not all what it seems. And it turns out it's a Dr. Tulp alien hospital that is sort of doing unusual things to the body. And yeah, it is very much sort of that steampunky style of we're going to create this normal machinery such as say a computer and then sort of recreate that from sort of human parts and sort of leftovers. And it is a little bit all slapdash. And I do quite like that. I like the, this story is incredibly patched work together and not all perfect which is something that you get to sort of experience with Jago and Lightfoot. All the villains are very creative. You can't just have this all oh, technology from the future that's came into Victorian London. It's normally technology that has came in however it's needed to adapt itself meaning that it always has that Victorian undertone all the way throughout which is something very much that is nice for people that like history such as myself. So yeah overall for the similarity engine I think that is a really nice series finale and has some really nice elements that actually link all the stories together such as say the um, overarching plot sort of the main thing that he wants to do using this technology that was funded from the far off travelers club in episode two and it's just little things like that that you think ah oh, that's how that works then we also get the return of the mahogany murder kind of body things as well sort of the animatronic body things that are made of wood and they're kind of duplicates of the body and jago gets turned into one and we have this wonderful scene where lightfoot needs to pretty much burn his friend alive and we have him literally in his morgue with a massive blow torch and then we kind of have a moment where Jago realises, hang on, you've literally burnt something that looks exactly like me. He realised that Lightfoot kind of is one of those people that yes he does have feelings but when it comes to when he doesn't need feelings he can very easily ditch them which is good. It's very good for characters to have that and by the very end of the series you really get used to that family unit as I say. You know all the characters names instantly. I think that you know Ellie instantly as well because she's just so iconic. Sergeant Quick is a great character as well sort of a sergeant strolling through the Victorian streets and kind of not really doing his job properly and then you have Lightfoot sort of doing his job for him and at the very end of the series you also get a cliff hanger as well for series two which I think is a bold move. I think that normally for the first series of stuff you don't really end on a cliffhanger in case series one doesn't go particularly well but I think they just knew you know what this series is decent let's go and do a second one and that of course links into series two that could possibly maybe who knows relate to vampires. Ooh I guess you'll need to wait until the next review to see what that's about and I've not actually listened to that series in a very long time so I need to get onto that pretty much straight after filming this review because I'm rather excited I have been waiting to sort of film this then go on to series two after. So yeah. That In conclusion, Jago and Lightfoot series one is a perfect way to start the adventures into the infernal investigations of Victorian London. Introducing the main cast in a way that effortlessly combines within the narrative of the four adventures, while spontaneously giving us a taste of what to look out for in the future series of Jago and Lightfoot. Capturing the gothic dark setting of Victorian life contrasted with the richer figures within the society of that period. From the pure science fiction Doctor Who is known for in the Below the Devil and the Similarity Engine, as well as combining those science fiction elements to the paranormal and theatrical aspects of Victorian life, excellently presented in The Spirit Trap. From the get-go, The Bloodless Soldier delivers impact within the final act that instantly brings George and Henry together, a move that isn't necessarily expected from the first episode within a Doctor Who spin-off series, proving that it is only just the beginning and sets the tone of the many powerful adventures to come enjoyed this review and I hope it's kind of give you a little bit of an introduction into the Jago Lightfoot universe. If you have any questions about Jago Lightfoot then please do them in the description below because I want to get as many of you to be Jago Lightfoot fans as possible so yeah any questions I can help with I'll be happy to answer to at any point and also generally for this series I think that for £20 it gives you that brilliant example of having sort of the different formats of stories. Incredibly experimental, wonderful chemistry between the main protagonists as well and a thoroughly enjoyable listen. Honestly the four hours went like that because the just the chemistry between the two people sort of Jago and Lightfoot together really nicely sort of make you think oh this is a great relationship that they've got going on so yeah a really enjoyable release.
Thanks for watching this review. I guess I'll see you all in the next Doctor Who video at some point in the near future. I guess I'll see you all in the next Jay Gunn Lightfoot review or sort of Series 2 at some point in the near future as well. Thanks for watching. I'll just see you all next time. Bye for now.